from New York to Los Angeles and Phoenix to San Francisco. Waymo is expanding its footprint one city, one sensor, one street at a time. Waymo is a subsidiary of Google and it started with the vision to build the world's most trusted driver. Autonomous driving is challenging, but when it comes to building trust, Waymo seems to have cracked the code for robust self-driving in both urban and suburban environments. The platform has been tested over 7 million miles across the US, boasting a safety record that outperforms human drivers. When a self-driving car can navigate the bustling streets of New York, maneuver narrow lanes, and withstand freezing winters, handling the summer should be a breeze. That's right, Waymo has launched its autonomous ride hailing service in the sunny neighborhoods of Los Angeles and San Francisco. So when did this project begin? And how did Google end up developing these cars? We'll decode that in today's episode of Boring Sage. It all started in 2009 when the founders of Google decided to venture into the world of self-driving vehicles. They retrofitted a Toyota Prius with LiDAR and a few other sensors. The early Waymo team focused on developing self-driving capabilities and understanding the challenges. Here is a short snippet of the first ever ride with their first rider, Steve Mahan from Texas. Hands-free, the car cruised through Texas neighborhoods using laser sensors and radars, stopping at all the stop signs as expected. This hands-free journey sparked the dawn of Waymo's self-driving era, and that's what you see out here. After stopping at a fast food place for a quick break, the team set out to thoroughly test the car on both freeways and neighborhood streets across various parts of Texas. They navigated different road conditions from wide open highways to narrow residential areas, intermittently stopping at eateries, evaluating the car's performance in real-world driving scenarios. Steve provided valuable feedback at the end of the journey and helped the team to improve its performance. As impressive as this was in 2009, the team didn't stop there in advancing this autonomous driving system. In 2015, they decided to shift from off-the-shelf vehicles to designing their own custom prototype called Firefly. The team spent a significant amount of time starting with sketches, then building a wooden model and eventually developing a fully functional prototype. When it was time to bring this compact prototype onto the streets, it won the hearts of riders of all ages. From kids to adults and even grandma and grandpa, they all connected with this new concept of self-driving in 2015. The absence of a steering wheel didn't seem to be of concern at the time even to Steve. In 2015, Waymo completed the world's first driverless ride on public roads, just a person in the car, no steering wheels or pedals, navigating everyday traffic with Steve. Steve was brave enough to give this little prototype a chance. He described it as a profound experience to be alone in the car, navigating the neighborhoods of Austin and expressed optimism about the future of the self-driving cars. This was a great feedback for the team web. Beyond qualitative feedback, the team actually conducted performance testing and the car successfully navigated busy intersections with ease and safety. Object detection and collision avoidance were some of the core features of these prototypes. What was astonishing was that even the contemporary sensors and software Google had built at the time were robust enough to detect surrounding objects predict their trajectories and ensure safe, reliable navigation. This led to the further development of this project. Over the next several years, the team continued to develop modern platforms for self-driving and experimented with several off-the-shelf platforms like Chrysler and Jaguar. From 2009 to now, Waymo has made significant progress in self-driving, moving from early prototypes to developing fully autonomous vehicles. While they are currently settled on the Jaguar iPlace platform, known for its compatibility with the self-driving tech, the team plans to expand this to Hyundai in the coming years, aiming to diversify their fleet. Now it's time to see this in action. You can order a Waymo One ride using the mobile app. 
During your ride, you can follow along on the in-car screen which shows details like your estimated arrival time and the route you will take. If you would like an assistance, you can request so using Google's Rider Support Theme Interface located inside this car. If you need to pause or stop the ride, simply press the pullover button and the car will safely drop you off at the next safest location. At the end of your ride, the car will actually remind you to take your belongings and alert you if a cyclist or another vehicle is approaching from behind, keeping you safe at all times. Safety has been embedded into this platform since day one. That brings us to this question. How does this self-driving system work and how did actually Google figure this out all the way from 2009 to 2024? How does it know what's in front of it? How does it determine its current position? Which route it should follow and how fast it should move? We cover this technology and case study in great detail in our course on self-driving cars. From Zooks to Waymo and Tesla, we break down these technologies and these case studies in an easy to understand manner. Ready to start your journey in this field? Check the link in the description below. And now, let's get back to Waymo. So, what you're looking at is a Waymo driver, essentially the Waymo system adapted for a variety of vehicular platforms. It's the most advanced, fully autonomous technology in the world. You'll quickly notice these aren't your normal vehicles. They are equipped with a range of sensors and software systems. These allow them to navigate cities autonomously in a safe and reliable manner under all traffic conditions and in all urban and suburban environments. Sensors like radars, lidars and cameras are located on the top and around the vehicle, custom designed for autonomous navigation. The goal is to use the strategic sensor placement that you see out here to give Waymo vehicles a 360 degree view of their surroundings. Let's start with LiDARs. LiDARs are the most powerful sensor working in both day and night. They create a 3D view of the world. The most powerful LiDAR is located on the vehicle's dome capable of seeing up to 360 meters away. The perimeter LiDARs placed around the vehicle detect pedestrians, cars, cyclists and more. The platform is also equipped with high definition depth cameras that can see at extreme distances. It includes a staggering 29 cameras with overlapping field of views to identify objects in front and around the vehicle making better decisions day or night. They also feature a cleaning system and heaters to ensure these sensors stay clean and operational during the journey. Radar is located in six places around the vehicle and complements the cameras and lidars. It works well in all weather conditions, including fog, rain, and snow. The data captured by all these sensors enables Waymo to create detailed 3D maps of the surrounding and make safe, efficient navigation decisions. To give you a perspective, this system is so powerful that it can detect up to 300 meters away from the car roughly the length of the three football fields. These array of sensors provide an incredibly coherent, detailed and high definition 360 degree vision enabling Waymo to create 3D maps of each neighborhood it navigates. This comprehensive mapping forms the foundational model of Waymo's perception stack. This stack serves as the core system allowing the vehicle to interpret and understand its surrounding in real time. The model allows this vehicle to see the world and develop detailed maps that are passed to the next model. So, the data from this map, when compared with the real-time sensor data, allows Waymo to track the location of each vehicle at all times. In the world of self-driving cars, here we use a technique called map matching which we cover in detail in our course. The goal over here is to align the map with the sensor data to identify its precise location. Next, the system calculates the predicted future behavior of all the agents in the scene. Using a strong foundation in artificial intelligence and neural networks, the Waymo system processes this data to calculate a safe route while responding to evolving traffic conditions in real time. In addition to reacting to familiar traffic scenarios, 
The Waymo driver is also capable of handling situations it has never encountered before such as this one. Thanks to extreme training through simulations and real world data, it can analyze new and unpredictable scenarios, learning from them on the fly. This combination of simulated training and real world data ensures Waymo can make safe, reliable decisions even in unforeseen circumstances as it navigates through different cities. The finalized parts from the planner are then sent to the motion control system. It's this system that activates this trajectory on both normal and hilly roads, ensuring safety of riders and pedestrians at all times while keeping them alert. So, to summarize, the perception system acts like the eyes of the vehicle, allowing it to see the world, detect objects and obstacles in surroundings, and develop a detailed 3D map. The localization system uses this map and aligns it with the sensor data to accurately identify the vehicle's location and track it. This data is then sent to the power planner, which develops a safe trajectory while responding to evolving scenarios in real time. The park planner is also trained extensively using in-house simulators to ensure robustness and ability to handle scenarios that's never seen before in real life. We cover this in detail in our course. This data is then sent to the motion control system, which manages acceleration, brakes, and steering to guide the car. We cover this technology and case study in great detail in our course on self-driving cars. From Zooks to Waymo and Tesla, we help you simplify these technologies. Ready to start your journey in this field? Check the link in the description below. Now let's get back to Waymo. Now that we have covered the self-driving system architecture of Waymo, let's take a quick look at how it navigates diverse and challenging scenarios. In this scenario, we are in downtown Phoenix and it's our turn to go so we are proceeding. We are looking around. Oops! It's looked like there is a red light run on our path, so we slow down. Now we proceed as they move out of the way. Here, we are trying to turn right on red, and this is San Francisco, and there's a lot of stuff happening. This is an unprotected maneuver, so we are creeping in to gain some visibility. There is a lot going on. There are cars that are turning, cars coming from left, there is a turbo pet who just sneaked up on our left, and there are pedestrians on our right. And we can tell they don't want to cross. Then, there's this motorcycle that comes across. And now, it seems like we have a right gap to move after this motorcycle. And there we go, we make a safe turn. We are on a road now with active construction zone. There are road signs warning us about the construction ahead and some phones. We see a construction worker holding a stop sign, so we stop as instructed. An excavator is blocking our path and it seems like it slowly starts clearing itself. We'll wait until the construction worker flips their sign back and then proceed safely, ensuring the safety of those workers who are close to us. This safe and reliable maneuver around construction zone is what makes Waymo safe and reliable across cities. Here is another construction zone. Our vehicle sees a road sign with a right arrow, recognizing that it needs to slow down on the right side of the cone corridor since the center lane is closed. It drives slower than the posted speed limit, navigates through this intersection, and encounters more construction on the other side. This forces it to drive over what used to be a parking spot and nudge around a little bit around this parked vehicle before the construction zone ends. Here is another scenario where the Waymo vehicle responds proactively to an approaching emergency vehicle on the left. It identifies this vehicle coming from the left, slows down, allows the vehicle to park, before merging back into its lane. In this case, the Waymo vehicle is able to safely navigate through foggy conditions as in San Francisco. Thanks to the placement of the six radars that are placed around the vehicle, it can maintain robust situational awareness even in these challenging weather conditions because of the radar sensors. We cover this technology and such key studies in great detail in our course on self driving cars. From Zooks to Waymo and Tesla, we break down the self-driving tech stack of these vehicles in an easy to understand manner for you. If you are ready to start your journey in this field, do check out the link in the description below. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Boring Sage. Thank you.